Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV. The main talking points tonight, Ronnie Dyla says he's not frustrated by reports of lots of other people interested in the manager's job at Celtic. He says he's only focused on the double. We'll hear from the Celtic manager shortly. Mark Warburton has been singing the praises of Peter Houston ahead of Rangers' trip to Falkirk on Friday night. And Hibs are getting closer to a Hamden return. Can they get to the Scottish Cup final after the disappointment of the League Cup final? Well, they're well on their way after that win last night over Inverness Cali Thistle. That's just a few of the topics we'll be discussing on the programme tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and I'm delighted to say our bootroom guest is Sampdoria youth coach uh, and a man we'll get to know a little better over the next half hour. Fabrizio Picaretta uh, joins us to talk all things football. Fabrizio, welcome to the programme. Of course, you're over here um, taking your coaching badge. Why Scotland? Uh, for two reasons, basically. Because uh, the first one is that I think uh, uh, if in this uh, coaching course, um, co uh, managers like Mourinho or Village Boas uh, got their uh, badges, it means that uh, there, should, there must be something very good in. So, uh, also, uh, without joking, uh, the, the, Scot the, the course in Scotland is uh, well uh, known uh, in Europe uh, as one of the best uh, coaching courses. So I'm delighted to be involved. And also, there was a di another reason. Uh, when I started my license, I was uh, working. Um, I worked working in, in uh, Sunderland at Sunderland uh, Football Club. So uh, was a uh, you know for that reason that uh, uh, I started the A license there. So, uh, and now they gave me the chance to apply for the pro license, which is something that uh, I was very happy to, to do. And now it's um, already one year and a half that uh, the course is running. So everything is going okay so far. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's <coughs> great to see um, guys uh, like Fab coming to uh, this course. It, it does have a good reputation, mm -hmm. Rafi. And it, it, I mean, a lot of foreign coaches come to it, as well as, of course, we are well aware over the last couple of days, quite a lot of the managers who are managing in uh, the top flight here. Yeah, and I, th I think uh, a lot of our managers are, are really aware now how, how much this licence means, you know, not just for here in Scotland, but for for the whole of Europe and uh, when you've got that licence, as you just said there, you know, we have a great reputation here and when you're going to travel the world, it doesn't mean you're, you're going to play in the one country for your whole career. It, it, when you've got that licence, it just helps you everywhere you go. Yeah, and of course, uh, Fab, you're no stranger to coaching uh, on British shores. You were assistant to Paolo Di Canio. Yes, um, I was. That must have been a really interesting time for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's been three very interesting years with uh, with Paolo. You know, Paolo yeah, has, has been a fantastic player, yeah, especially here at Celtic. And um, I can say, uh, as a manager, as a coach as well, uh, uh, he's been he's been a, a fantastic. Uh, he, he did a fantastic job because uh, if you think what we achieved at Swindon in League Two. Uh, winning the league uh, straight away the first year in charge and then uh, we resigned when we were top of the league in League One and then we had the chance to go Sunderland and uh, like it or not we saved the, the club uh, from relegation because uh, when we arrived there they were in a free falling in a free fall seven games to go we managed to win uh, the Newcastle Derby which was uh, you know f amazing and uh, we we beat uh, Everton, David Moyes Everton, <laughs> and uh, and then we managed to save the club. The following year, uh, after following season, just after five games in charge, something uh, went wrong, and uh, the club decided to uh, to uh, sack Paolo and myself, of course, all the staff. But I have got great memories about the, of working with Paolo. I learned a lot from him. And uh, I'm proud to 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 be his uh, fellow. Uh, and of course, from your perspective, you've taken these courses with an ambition to be a manager in your own right. Of course, this is uh, especially because uh, Paolo. Now it's two years that is uh, not involved anymore in uh, in coaching, uh, and uh, I think now it's time for me to 
to take my my Next own step. my own yeah exactly and uh, just because uh, UK in general in Scotland is uh, is a country that where I I'm very comfortable and I like Scot Scottish football I after two years that I I'm involved in, uh, in the courses I know a lot of people a lot of coaches with me at the pro license uh, there are managers like Alec Neal, uh, Robbie Nelson, Paul Harley, uh, Archibald from Party Thistle, a lot of them. So I know them, uh, I, I know the players, I start to understand more the football environment in Scotland. So why not in the future, who never knows. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, listen, we're going to talk more about um, uh, you, your career, people that you've met, inspiration. Um, let's get your thoughts, uh, Ruffy, on uh, some of the stories today. Ronnie Dyla obviously reacting to uh, the story that uh, we had with uh, David Moyes. Um, this is what he had to say today about all the speculation surrounding his position as manager. No, it doesn't frustrate me at all, you know. And, um... I've been on the other side before, and uh, I've been in this side, and um, I've uh, I have a lot of other things to think about. If it's, uh, it's not about that as well, it's a lot going on. The newspaper want to fill the the pages every every day, and um, and for me, it's only what I'm thinking about to to get that double into into Celtic, and um, and uh, we are now exciting games ahead. Well, he's got the job; he's just got to stay in it by winning. Yeah, uh, and he's quite right. He has to be focused in, in what's ahead uh, and not worry about uh, what everybody's saying. He's got a double there to, to win. He himself will believe that if he wins that double, uh, it will help him towards staying in the, in the job. Uh, but it doesn't help when there's a calibre of manager out there uh, available. I think we all know that the, the board is going to have to make a decision. It won't be based on the double. It'll be based on European football and the success that Celtic Football Club need in that competition. So getting the double, uh, even though he does, if he moves on, will, will be something that he can keep on his CV. Yeah. Do you see it saving him? Uh, it's, again, it's, it's the owners who make that decision. Now, if he falls into the remit of the way the club is going to be run over the next two or three years by buying in young players and bringing them on and selling them. But I think European football, if he doesn't get to the European football, will be the big deciding factor. Yeah, OK, just before we go to the break, um, we're going to get uh, uh, Fabrizio's thoughts on the League Cup final, which he attended uh, uh, last weekend. We'll get his thoughts on that as well. But uh, Hibs, after the misery of the League Cup final, Ruffy, um, find themselves in a semi-final yeah. against Dundee United after an impressive win last night. Yeah, all credit to the players and the manager. Uh, as we spoke about it last night, when the final whistle went at the weekend there, having been on the end of it, you know, losing a goal in the final, it's, it's a hard one to get your head round and particularly bounce back with another really important game last night. But the players did it uh, and all credit to them. And they've got something to go for now. Uh, that The disappointment of the weekend will be in the back of their mind and they'll want to try and get to the final. And I'm not sure if they teach this on coaching courses, Ruffy, but it's always good to score two goals when everybody's actually questioning you as a striker, which is, of course, Anthony Stokes. Yeah, well, that's a sign of a good player. You know, uh, nobody likes to be criticised. Nobody uh, likes to see in the back of the paper that you're not pulling uh, for the team. And he's went out and proved... As we all know, that on his game he can score goals and he can win games and that's what he did. Yeah. Um, so Inverness and the flip side of this, yeah. it's been such a disappointing season from the highs of last season with the, the cup win and the high position in the league to this season now where he has to somehow get players back from injury and try and avoid just going further and further down that table. Yeah, right from the very beginning of the season, right after the cup, he lost very important players broken legs, people moving, you know, injuries, players been out for six months and it just hasn't helped them. They've done well to sort of take the pressure away from the early part of the season, but now they're in the mix. Now they're in a horrible run now that's going to drag them into that playoff position unless they start winning games. OK, um, so uh, congratulations to Hibernian. They'll take on Dundee United. Can you see them making that return to Hamden in a final? Well, I think if you look at the other tie there, that it's easier of the two. <laughs> so I think if you ask Alan Stubbs, yeah, I think he'll be happy with the tie that he's got. 
OK, coming up in the next part of the programme, Fabrizio will uh, hopefully tell us a wee bit about uh, working under Marcello Lippi as well as uh, some of his ambitions. Uh, coming up in the next part of the programme, also we're going to talk Falkirk against Rangers. Uh, that's taking place tomorrow night. Mark warburton has been singing the praises of Peter Houston. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted that we have Italian coach Fabrizio Picaretta here with us as our boot room guest. Uh, you see, we have guests from near and far, Ruffy. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I just keep producing little surprises for you every day on this show. Yeah, but it's good he's, he's here and he's enjoying it and he's brought some decent weather with him as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, next week, hopefully, we'll try and get Carl Heinz Rummenigge <laughs> just to tell him, <laughs> please, don't, don't ban Scottish clubs yeah. from Champions League football, Ruffy. But that's another story. And talking of football, and uh, of course, Fabrizio, you, like so many of the coaches, we spotted quite a number of you guys watching on uh, the League Cup final. Yeah. What did you make of it? Because Hibs, clearly, um, we thought may well have gone on to win that game, but in the end, Ross County were the, were the victors. Yeah. Uh, watching the game, I realised straight away there were two different uh, ways of uh, think football, if you, want to, if you want to know what I mean. Uh, Ross County uh, played uh, an old-fashioned style of football. Men marking all over the place, uh, uh, one sweeper and uh, hips uh, is more like play making style of football, which I like to be fair. More quality all over the pitch. Great player, Henderson, very good player. <coughs> what uh, makes the dif made the difference, in my opinion, is that um, hips couldn't take their chances because they couldn't uh, recognize the the weakness of a uh, Ross County system and they kept doing something that couldn't work uh, while uh, Ross County kept uh, uh, this identity until the end yeah and uh, they won uh, deservedly they deservedly won uh, even though I think that their style that's, that kind of uh, style of play can work only in the short term yeah uh, you mentioned there, though, Fab, that um, there was a system that they they were unable to break down. Yeah. What, in your mind, should Hibs have done to get the result then? Uh, just because, uh, as I said, uh, Ross County played <laughs> marking um, mark man v man all over the all over yeah. the pitch. Basically, they should have been more uh, able to try and stretch. Uh, with the two strikers especially, um, Stokes and uh, Cummings. Cummings, they didn't stretch too much uh, the, the, the three at the back and uh, there wasn't too many, uh, there weren't too many runs from uh, uh, the midfielders. Yeah. They couldn't find that space, so um, they tried to keep the ball too much and um, allowed uh, Ross County players to uh, Close the game. Close, yeah, to yeah. close the spaces, yeah. display the space, and they couldn't, they couldn't break, break. And then they, of course, Ross County took advantage from uh, the the counters, and they were very good because. Yeah. I get the feeling maybe um, maybe Ross County had watched a Claudio Gentili video. Yes, <laughs> with uh, yeah. I I don't want to sound dis disrespectful, of course. Uh, it's not, um, but. Uh, in my opinion, my uh, if as a fan I would be happy as a Ross County fan, as I would from a coach a coach point of view, I don't think that this is a style that uh, suits me. Yes, yeah, absolutely, and, and each to their own, Ruffy. That's what you have to mm -hmm. do in, in football. Um, the strategy is for the players available. How can you outfox your opponents? to get the yeah. result you need if you don't have the quality that they have. Yeah, certainly. I, I think Jim McIntyre certainly looked at all the strength that Fab's talking about, that, that Hibbs had. Uh, he adjusted his side. Uh, he went for the three at the back, which, which was a gamble because they don't play like that yeah, week, in, week in, week far, out. Yeah. So he must have worked on it uh, for a long time to, to, to think that that was a system. And at the end, it worked. Uh, I think if it went to extra time, we might have seen a, a, a different result. But 
they've won the game and all credit to them. Yeah, and talking of systems, you can have all the systems you want, but if you have Neymar, Suarez and Messi, Ruffy, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's very <laughs> difficult to play any system. Even Pep Guardiola <laughs> found that out. Yeah. Um, I mean, the goals last night were unbelievable again. Yeah, I mean, you've got the three best players in the world. Uh, that's what happens. You know, that's what you pay the money to go and see. They, they have the ability to come up with something special and, and they keep doing it. And they keep doing it in the big stage, uh, and that's a sign of right good players. Yeah, uh, Wenger under pressure. Yeah, I think so. But I, mean, I think he's been in the game long enough to get a, a top quality club wherever he goes. Yeah, and just on that, Fab, um, I presume uh, when you have players of that stature, um, I mean, Paulo himself had that quality as well. You don't want to overcoach them. Go out no. and enjoy yourself, guys. Of course, of course. Uh, as a, I think, as a coach, as a manager. Uh, if you have this kind of, uh, of players, you have to uh, try and to switch them in your in your uh, philosophy, in your style. But you can't. Mm, you, you have to allow them to express themselves. Otherwise, uh, because there is something that uh, I like um, from. Uh, mm, I read the book uh, of um, Roy Keane. Yeah. He said, when you become manager, you realize straight away that you need the players more than what the players need you. Yeah. So this is right. I think if you have good players, you have to let them free to express themselves within some uh, within a structure. But you have to let them free. Yeah, I don't think as a manager uh, or a coach at Barcelona, you would get the get away with shouting at Messi. Any chance you checking back and making a tackle? Yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I'm with you on that, Rafi. I think Messi can do it. And just talking of that, just briefly, again, if we talk about coaches. I mean, Pep Guardiola, it was close last night, Fab, but, uh, but in the end, Bayern Munich uh, knocked out Juventus. Yes, yes. And uh, this is a trait of the, the, the big teams, the, the, great, the great teams. They, don't, they, they're never, uh, they never die. Uh, so, as you said, Bayern Munich uh, was, uh, you know, on the uh, on the brink of be uh, of to, to be out, and then uh, they managed to 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 draw the game uh, without losing their identity. This is the most important thing, yeah. in my opinion. If you could pick a team who's going to win it now, because the draw takes place tomorrow, who are you going for? I'm going for Barcelona, straight all life, because they are too organized as a team and they've got uh, the best uh, individuals that uh, you can have in this moment. Here's a tough question, Rafi, and I, I, um, I am trying to answer it myself uh, uh, as far as looking back at previous Barcelona sides. I look at the 2006 side, which had Samuel Eto'o in it, um, and it had Henrik Larsson in that side, Puyol, um, so many good players and they won the Champions League, but then I look at the team that <coughs> Uh, I was in Rome watching them hammer Manchester United, um, even with Cristiano Ronaldo on the United side, Messi was still too good for them. I'm trying to think, is this Luis Enrique side better than the two previous great Barcelona teams? Uh, it's a difficult one uh, for me, Peter. I, I think when you've got these three uh, fantastic players up front, I think if you're in the opposition, you'll be saying to yourself, well, let's try and get at their defence. But the biggest problem you've got is getting the ball because yeah. possession-wise, they are masters that not only when they lose it, I think there's a stat out there that they get they get the ball back quicker than any other team. They get possession of the... As soon as they lose they hunt in packs and they just get the ball back. So it's very difficult. Yeah, um, just before we get a quick uh, word with uh, Fabrizio on this, um, uh, if Motherwell uh, call this game off because of a flu virus going through, it wouldn't be the ideal time for Aberdeen who are trying to keep the pressure on Celtic. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't be. Uh, and I think Mark will have to come up with, obviously, the doctor's lines. Uh, I think there's a procedure you have to go through of how many players, but uh, it'll be a, a touch and go, but I, I hope it goes ahead. And just briefly, uh, Fabrizio, before we go, um, there'll be a, a million and one chairman and owners out there will be looking and thinking to themselves, mm, just maybe, uh, are you keen to work in Britain? Would you like to get you know, an assistance job or a coaching job, a full manager's job? Uh, I, I'm a professional. Um, so uh, what I'm looking for uh, is the chance to, to, to work in Scotland or in the UK. As I said, Scotland would be great for me. Uh, basically as a head coach, uh, manager, 
that culture. You know, as a uh, foreigner, we are used more to to think about head coach because the f the manager position is different here because now many uh, other elements are involved in the clubs. There are sporting directors, there are technical directors. Yeah. So I'm a I'm a coach. I, I and also, you know, uh, as long as it's a good, uh, <coughs> a good plan, a good club, uh, I would be very uh, ha happy to to be involved uh, in uh, Scottish football. Well, listen, it doesn't get any better than that. If you're out there, you're interested. Uh, we haven't told Fabrizio yet that Ruffy and myself will take 10% of any future deal that's uh, organised. <laughs> and you tell him, Ruffy, I haven't got the guts. Uh, great to speak to Fabrizio Picaretta. We wish him well uh, in his coaching ambitions from Ruffy and myself. Join us tomorrow, if you can, with Hugh McDonald.